those that are able, I'm going to ask you to stand in reverence for the reading of God's Word from the book of John. John chapter number 11 is where we will be today. And I want to deal with a, an issue that is straight from God's Word. But here in August, let us deal with it. Let us see God's face and let us see what He would say to our hearts about it. But there is an excellent chance that you will be challenged today to obey the Lord, to even like the pastor, <laughs> assuming you did before we started. <laughs> Notice I said that without Allison here today. But God's Word pierces our hearts sometimes. But God's Word is meant to bring us into conformity to His will. And it doesn't always tickle and feel nice, even though we would prefer that sometimes. Let's begin reading in verse 14, and it's kind of a select reading today, not just so I can move around on what I want to, but uh, Elias is sick today, and we do appreciate your prayers, he was sick yesterday, and I have battled something for the four days, And uh, uh, but Friday night between 11 at night and about 3 in the morning, the Lord and I uh, got together. And I will do my best to relay to you what the Lord gave me for you today, but I pray that God does the preaching today. Look at verse 14 of John chapter 11. And then we're going to skip all the way over to verse 38. Here's what verse 14 said. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now go to verse 38. Where the Bible says, And Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. And it was a cave and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with an napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, Believe on him. That's the reading of God's word, and everyone say it. Amen. God, simply today, melt our hearts with your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Be seated as we see the miracle of the raising of Lazarus. We also want to walk a path in the scriptures that will challenge our hearts and let us look at some things because, listen very clearly, just as plainly as God is alive. God's alive, and everyone said. There is an opposition force to his plan. Satan is at work. He has his advocates. Satan has his angels of, uh, uh, following as well, if you will. He has his demonic forces at his disposal. And just as clearly as there is a God that's alive, there is a devil that is very clearly fighting the things of God. Now let's walk the text for just a moment of John chapter number 11 and look in verse 14. Here's what the Bible says. Lazarus is dead. Any questions? That's pretty simple. You don't need me to explain that. Lazarus is dead. Let me try to explain it. Lazarus is not alive. Now that's the content. I mean, that's as good as I can do. He is dead. And let me say this. There are Christians in our pulpits every week. You're either alive in Christ or you're dead in your sin. And there is no in between. There are saints and apes. You're either lost or saved. You're either born again or lost and need, need a relationship with Jesus. And we need to understand that in a very, very real sense today. Verse 14 is profound. Because to understand the power of him being raised, you need to understand he was dead. By the way, folks today can't get saved until they realize they're lost. 
Folks today are going to struggle in a society, and, and the devil's got a masterful plan in our society, certainly in America. If there is no sin, then there's no need for a Savior. If there's no hell, then there's no need for an escape from punishment, if you will. And all these kinds of things. See, we need to understand he has undermined one doctrine at a time. And either all the Bible matters, or you can't say some of it does. It either all matters or none of it can. Jesus is dead. Number two, look at verse number 40. Lazarus' death was an opportunity. You say, well, that's not very good. Well, let me ask you this. It's always an opportunity. Whatever you're going through today, when you'll either give praise to the Lord, your people will look at you and say, I can't believe they handled that like that. It's an opportunity. Verse 40, here's what the Bible says. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Now, the real question I have for you this morning is this. Do we want our way or do we want to see the glory of God? Now, if that makes sense, say amen. amen. Because seeing the glory of God sometimes is painful. Seeing the glory of God sometimes is a difficult time. Seeing the glory of God sometimes means that you have to go through uh, uh, some pain and some sweat and some spiritual tears. I, I had a ministry intern, and he's been the interim pastor that, that we just left, and he's 21 years old, about to be 22, I believe. And, and he has been called to ministry and all those kind of things. And one of the things he and I used to talk about was it's easy to get up and preach sometimes when you get the message on a thundercloud and lightning and everything else. But sometimes it comes through toiling in God's Word, and you praying and seeking his face and waiting to hear from him because I've had lots of messages I wanted to preach the congregation, but it works out better if we wait for God's message Amen. to be preached. It's an opportunity. Lazarus is dead, verse 14, but in verse 40 he's telling those around, listen, you said you wanted to see the glory of God and just because the glory of God didn't show up the way Shane thought it should or the way you wanted it to, doesn't mean the glory of God doesn't show up, but sometimes to see the glory of God we're going to come through some valleys along the way. It's pretty simple. I like rainbows. This church has a real pretty picture of a rainbow over it. And that's the only reason I came. I was looking for the pot of gold inside the Bethlehem Baptist Church, ain't it? No, it's got a rainbow over it. But you only see rainbows after rainstorms. You only see the beauty of the rainbow and the reminder of what God has told us after we've been through a storm. And sometimes we only see the glory of God in after we've been through a storm of life. Lazarus is dead in verse 14 and verse 40. Lazarus is dead as an opportunity. And then go down to verse 44. Lazarus is raised. In verse 44, we see, and he that dead came forth. Now that's pretty simple as well. His Bible clearly declares, he that was dead came forth. Now notice what else happens. Look in verse 41. How did that happen? But Jesus himself had prayed to the Father for that to happen. Look in verse 41. Then took away the stone from the place, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast, what? Heard me. Everybody say, heard me. One, two, three. That's right. Hey, Jesus talked to God about something so that people could see the glory of God on earth. And if you want this church to be a blessing into the community, we can't do it without Him. We better seek His face. We better reach out to heaven. And when we touch heaven and heaven touches us, folks will see heaven touching us. And they're going to say, that ain't just shame. The shame couldn't do that. Shame couldn't do that. Shame wouldn't do that. Because I ain't what I want to be. I ain't what I need to be. But thank God. I ain't what I used to be. Yes. And that's what it needs to be with all of us. I don't want folks to see us. I don't want folks to see Jesus. Because he's the one worth seeing and everybody's seeing. Yes. When we look in God's word right here, we see Jesus praying. And by the way, there's always somebody watching. By the way, I am glad that when I was 14 years old, these young people, it's good to see you here and sitting up and all over the congregation. But listen to me, young people. There's lots of us that are grateful they didn't have a camera rolling everything we were doing at age 14. Amen? Just stand up and test it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can't go anywhere and you're not being filmed. But by the way, that's always been true in God's eyes. God always knew what we were doing. He always knew what we weren't doing. In verse 42 of what it says, And I knew that thou hearest me always. But notice what he says. See, Jesus knew God heard him. But look what he said. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. See, we always need to be reminded. First of all, we need to be obedient to God. 
But we also need to understand there's an implication when we're obedient to God, other people see us be obedient to God. Now this ties in today because the actual title of the message is Dealing with the Spirits of Earth. Dealing with the Spirits of Earth. Now, I'm going to get in your grill house this morning just a little bit. In Jesus' name, and I don't know your personal situation, so again, if God deals with your heart, don't get mad at Get mad at me. That's fine, but take it up with him. Amen? Amen. Now, if you want to cheer me out a little bit, that's all right when we get done. As a buddy of mine said one time, we'll check your tithe record, and I might listen for a few minutes, but if you ain't up to date on your tithe, I ain't thinking that you are no credit. <laughs> Amen? That'll come to you in a minute. All right, now. Look in verse 45. You still with me? Say amen. amen. In verse 45, there's a reason. Many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. When we win and when we lose, the goal is that many believe on him. Our goal is not to have 400 at church. Our goal is to have 400 get saved because saved folks are going to be at church. Our goal is not just for another church to split and send people over here that are already just about about something. Uh, our goal is to see people that are lost get saved. And all the heavens celebrated last week because one got saved in their congregation. And guess what? We need to be about Jesus and about His great love because time is short. Amen. The goal of wins and losses is that many will believe. Let me say this. The death and the raising of Lazarus raises some tough questions. You know, I looked in my Bible this week. I know that makes you feel better as a pastor than I look in my Bible this week. <laughs> Boy, there's so many deacon jokes right there, and I'll just let them all go by the way. <laughs> and you know what I'm not saying? Now, do you love me? Say amen. amen. Yeah, about half. <laughs> I didn't find the book of Lazarus. Twenty eighteen, if he had died, he might have written a book. Told you I was gonna get the will out. There's all kinds of spirits at work in the world today. We need to be careful. Because just because you had an emotional experience with the Spirit doesn't mean it was the Spirit of Almighty God. That's good, Shane. That's right. Amen. We need that. We're thinking about that one, bro. Now let's look in God's Word. How about that? As it comes to that, let's use the Bible. Amen. Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 16. I trust it is in the Bible. If it's right after the book of Lazarus in your Bible, tear it out. All right. Look in Luke 16, and I want us to get that nitty gritty. And I'm not going to read the whole text. Let me paraphrase. Rich man, beggar. Both die. Beggar goes into Abraham's bosom. Rich man is in hell. You're familiar with the text now. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. Let me ask you a question. Uh, the story goes on that the rich man says this. Would you send somebody back to, some, to my brethren so that they would be avoid this horrible place? Now, if this is important, because you need to understand this. One was in hell and couldn't leave, and one was in paradise or Abraham's bosom, or in a New Testament sense, we will say the word heaven, and I'll go back and break that down in just a minute, and wouldn't be seen. Now, if that was true in the book of Luke, what changed in today's world that we would think folks get to die and go and come back? We need to be careful what spirits we're listening to. There's lots of modern thoughts on this. Let's just use the consistent word of God. Don't let me upset you today. Let me challenge you. And I want to go through the text right here. Where the beggar died, he's carried into Abraham's bosom. All right? Now, we can all agree on that. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. All right? The rich man dies, he's in hell. Not all the spirits are, uh, 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 that we deal with in this life are God. That's why we have to know the God of the Bible and the Holy Spirit. And we have to get out of our minds that the Holy Spirit is an it. The Holy Spirit is a he. Amen. It is God. Not just something. It is someone. Amen. 
Now, when we look in God's word right here, I want you to look at verse 23 of Luke 16. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus of the beggar in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And he refused that opportunity. He goes on and says, but I have others. Please send them back in order. Now listen, it just makes sense to me that if folks won't listen to the man of God that's called to preach or the word of God they find and pick up and begin, what makes you think they're going to listen to somebody that comes back? And that's what Luke 16 says. Is that in your Bible? Say amen. amen. So we need to be careful. I want to give you some verses here in just a moment, but let me say this. This still holds true today. I have a man I know. He was pronounced dead. Now, he will tell you that he saw some things while he in that interlude of being unconscious and those kind of things, but he would also tell you he never made it into the presence of God. He never had communication with anybody that had already departed or anything like that. He simply was pronounced dead. As a matter of fact, his life story would be while they're hauling him down the hallway of the morgue, he pulled the sheet down and said to somebody that he knew, what's going on? <laughs> now, Deacons, you talk about a need for... Uh, the defibrillating machine, that'd probably be it, brother. Amen. <laughs> Somebody asked me one time, does the Lord still speak in an audible voice? I said, he can. I've asked him not to when I'm going down the road by myself. Amen. <laughs> We're not telling you that some things had to happen that I can't explain, but I can tell you this. We need to be careful what spirit we think we're listening to. And just because we had this unique experience doesn't mean that we need to reinvent theology. It needs to line up with the Word of God. Amen. In Luke chapter 16, verse 23, and if you want to go in that text, there are many theological thoughts here, but specifically, if you have a, uh, an old Schofield Bible as an example, I think in the bottom of it, it even gives you an explanation. But before the ascension of Christ, before the ascension of Christ, there are many theologians that would tell you the word hell in Luke 16, 23 is actually rendered the word Hades. When you render that word Hades out, Hades was in two divisions before the uh, 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 ascension of Christ, is what some theologians would tell you. Those that had a right walk with God went to the side called Abraham's bosom. Those that did not have a right walk with God went to the side called simply hell or Hades or Hades, uh, uh, you know, to the right and on the left or the other side, whichever. Now, then those folks would also tell you since the ascension of Christ, then that became what we now know as well, that to be absent from the body is to be what? Present, Present with the Lord. Jesus looked at one thief and said, and said today you'll be with me where? In paradise. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, 9, and 10, I believe it is, it talks about where Jesus led captivity captive. And there are many then that would say under that theology that what happened was Jesus himself, he, he on his way of the ascension and resurrection, if you will, what he did was he visited the same side of Hades and rescued those folks. And now they're in a state awaiting and in the immediate presence of God, if you will. And then when we die, we will join them and we will be awaiting the glorious resurrection and those that are dying without Christ today still go to what was Hades or hell and they are awaiting the great white throne judgment. Now if that all makes sense, say amen. amen. So we need to understand this. When we look in that text right there, paradise, Abraham's bosom would be the same terminology used in different places under that line of theological and hell, or the Hades, the part for those that were lost, and someone dies today without Christ, is that something? Now, born again Christian, write this one down. You should never say this. Well, God will just have to sort that out for me at the great white throne judgment. Here's why you shouldn't say that. Born again Christian, you're not going to be part of the great white throne judgment. That's for the lost. That's for the ones without Christ. That's for the ones that have died out of the faith. What does this have to do with spirits? Well, as Christians, we should be controlled by the Holy Spirit. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. We should be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And we need to be careful when we sing country songs and things like that that say things like what we're going to do when we get to heaven. Because let me tell you this, uh, the Bible gets heaven right, but all of those songs and don't get heaven right. We need to understand in a real sense today, our theology is being formed more and more by outside influences outside of the Word of God. Now be careful, church. I'm warning you today. I'm warning you today. Don't base your theology on uh, Hollywood and, and so
celebrities and all those kind of things. Don't leave it based it on shame. Base it on the word of Almighty God. In Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to turn over there with you if you, if you don't mind. And then I must have been supposed to because I literally flipped to the exact page I need. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. We are to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And when we become under the influence of a different spirit, now there's a war going on inside of us. And when that war goes on inside of us, guess what? We are compromising. We are not yielding completely to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can't have His entire way with us because we're under the influence of another spirit. Many of you have heard before, even the alcohol industry and those things, they're called sometimes what? Spirits. Because they mess with your mind and your judgment. And they mess with how you react to things. And guess what? When you put that in your body, you're basically saying, Holy Spirit, move over because I want to be under the influence of another spirit. Well, wait a minute, preacher. I hadn't thought about it like that. Well, good. That's why you're here and God sent you and that's why God sent me. Now we're happy together. Amen. 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 <laughs> Those of you that have seen three of me because you were under the influence from last night. Amen. <laughs> I love this pulpit. You know why? You get a big pulpit, it makes a fat guy look skinny, and I love it. Ain't <laughs> nothing worse than having an 18 inch pulpit and a 36 inch preacher. Amen. <laughs> hey, listen, that's what 518 says. Look at Ephesians 518. It says this, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. See, if you're happy and you're filled with the Spirit, you've got all you need. When you get filled up with the Spirit and then say, but I need something else to compete with that, then what you're saying is the Spirit of God's not good enough for me. Now, how many of you be brave enough to raise your hand and say, hey, the Spirit of God's not good enough for me, not big enough for me, and not what I need? Maybe the Spirit, or what you thought was the Spirit of God in your life, just needs to be unleashed. Maybe the Spirit needs just to fresh out for you in your heart and your life. Now, if that makes sense, say amen. amen. Uh, I want to give you some warnings today, and we're going to turn in the Bible, and we're just going to have to turn there. That's our turn with me to Deuteronomy. That's in the Old Testament. Amen. I will be you here. Way to go. Deuteronomy. It's on the board. How about that? In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, specifically in verse number 10, there shall not be found any among you that one uh, anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Hey, let me tell you this. I, I told the deacons this. They probably kept it secret. My family's a no Halloween family. If we ain't supposed to put up with a witch, why would I want to let my girls dress up like one? We'll get to that in a month or two. We'll argue about that later. You still with me? Say amen. I don't have any idea what verse you have next to If you have verse 11, we'll go to it. If you don't, we won't. Hey, Amen. It's pretty simple. <laughs> hey, go with me, Eric. I got it in the Bible. It's okay. Go to Deuteronomy with me. Let's all look at it in your Bible. That way you can underline it. It's hard to underline on that screen. We'd ask that you don't write on our TVs. Amen. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Deuteronomy 18. You there? You there? Say amen. amen. All right, verse 11 goes on and says this. Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. A necromancer, someone that talks to the dead. I didn't say somebody that talks and makes you feel like you were dead. I said someone that talks to the dead. Our world is filled with this. Look around our society. We got folks that are saying they've had all these talks and people, and what's worse is, as Christians, sometimes we've embraced it, we supported it, and we bought into it, some circles. Church, we gotta be careful. We're not supposed to be talking to the dead. So why on earth, I part of the would the Lord send somebody from the dead to talk to a Christian to tell us to get saved and heaven's worth going to? But it wouldn't be 110 to nothing today, amen. That was the vote four weeks ago, just so you know. <laughs> we have to be careful. My job's not here to make you feel good. My job's to say, look out! The wolf's out there! Here comes the enemy! Be careful! we got to be on guard! Amen. And I love you enough to do that. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 26. 
that's also in your Bible. Turn right there with me. It says this, You shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantment, nor observe times. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 27. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. All of those things are warning them. And if they needed one, I bet we do too. Amen. Look at 2 Kings. Real quick, I've only got 33 more of these. Let's go hurry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's only 29. 2 Kings. You still with me? Say amen. amen. A little different today, but God laid it on my heart. Take it up with him. 2 Kings 21 and verse number 6. Here's what it says. And he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and use enchantments and dwell with, dwell with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. When we as Christians start listening to other spirits more than we're listening to the Spirit of God, then it's going to bring God's judgments. And everybody should have said, Amen. He is a just God. <coughs> and as born again Christians, when we say that we are living and following the Holy Spirit, He wants it to be the Holy Spirit alone. Boy, I need to do a better job to make sure that I'm not influenced by so many other factors. And I suspect I'm not by myself. First Chronicles chapter 10 and verse number 13, if you'll look there real quick. There's not that many more, I promise. But you know what? We're reading God's word. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of. We don't have anybody here that reads a horoscope just for fun, do we? You're just reading it for fun, but if it's real bad, you're going to take the day off. Amen. Amen. Stay away. Stay away. Quit flirting with the devil. By the way, young people, you listen to me. You be real careful when you get ready to start dating. You need to make sure that don't go out with somebody that you don't think going into the relationship is going to be somebody that loves the Lord Jesus Christ. And has a good spirit to walk. Because you're liable to fool around with somebody that doesn't and fall in love with them. And then what happens is your whole life gets altered. Now, there are cases where you date somebody and they get saved. And those things I've seen in the deacon ordination where they had 55 years ago or so now, uh, I was asked, I wasn't asked 55 years ago, you'll come back there, sir. He went up to a girl and asked if he could court a man's daughter. And he said, only if you go to church with us. He wasn't saved, but back in those days, courting was going to church. Amen? Amen. And the man got saved because the girl's daddy insisted he go to church and has been faithful in churches ever since. We're not talking about that, but you better be careful. You don't jump in to something thinking you can fix it because the devil's powerful. And you better have the Lord on your side. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. Let me give you in the New Testament, let me put this in modern day language. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 20. In Galatians 5 and verse 20, uh, here's what uh, the apostle writes. He's telling us all these things. And he says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, rash, drives, seditions, heresy. Now you go back right there, and under some of those uh, words, I want you to get this. Idolatry and witchcraft. There is a phrase there that we use, and it goes back to the Greek word. The Greek word, catch this, is pharmakia. Pharmakia. It's what we get our word, pharmacy. God knew we were going to have a drug problem in 2018, long before earth uh, even had man and woman on it. The drug problem, many of you might be fighting a, an addiction. And I want you to know God still loves you. You might be able to hide it. You might be, a, it may not be a, a, an illegal thing. It may be doctor prescribed, but you're hooked. And if that's you today, that spirit is competing with the Holy Spirit. And God wants to set you free. Amen. It's where we get our work for us. We all have involved and know somebody that this has touched in recent years. Mind altering, mind poisoning perhaps, but it creates another spirit, and that spirit is in competition with the Holy Spirit. We have to be careful, don't we? 
When we think in that terms like that, I want you to look at how dangerous this is in our world today. Turn to Revelation chapter 18, verse 23. I should have gotten one verse from Genesis. Then you could have said, man, that preacher talked all day. He went from Genesis to Revelation today. It's on the, it's on the screen. Write it down and go back and read it later. Revelation 18, 23. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. See, frankly, let me just be real clear. God loves you. Amen. You believe God loves you, say amen. amen. And the devil hates God. And therefore, you're in the crossfire. Therefore, I'm in the crossfire. See, the devil doesn't really like or dislike you. He just hates God, and because God loves us, we now, therefore, he's in a competition to drag us down, literally. So what's he put in our way? He's put dirty pictures in our way. Now listen to me. Listen, I've told you all this before. I am ordained under God. That'll come to you in a minute. And when I was a young age of some of these young people, if we wanted to fool around and try to see something we didn't need to see, we had to work at it. But now we've handed over a computer and it's pretty easy to find if we're not careful. And it's called a phone. Um, parents, I'm not fussing at you if you get your kid a phone. What I'm saying is, young people, you need to know that you have a great deal of danger in your hand. And don't give in to the devil. See, because we can alter our mind with the spirit of lust, with the spirit of alcohol, with the spirit of drugs, with the spirit of anything else. It's now in competition to the Holy Spirit. And that's dangerous. Now, if that makes sense, say amen. amen. Look at the last phrase in that verse that's on the screen. By thy sorceries were how many nations? Ah. All of them. The Bible still says the nation whose God is the Lord shall be blessed. But we're living in a deceived nation right now. And lots of it is because we're under the wrong influence of the Spirit. As we close in just a moment, I want you to understand that Christians will always have opposition by sorceries. I'm not going to ask you to turn there, but Acts chapter 13, verses 6 through 11, you can see them trying to do the work of God, and all of a sudden there's opposition by a sorcerer there. Friends, there are so many lost people that are deceived. You wonder, how can we ever get them to see the truth? <coughs> Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, I can't convince them to be saved. I can't convince them they're even confused, but thank God he can. See, we need to understand, our job is to teach and preach God's Word and love on them, just like Jesus would have, but give them the Word. That's the best gift you can give. They don't even know what you think about a spiritual issue. Tell them what God thinks about it. I get asked that all the time. Preach, what do you think about this issue? Well, I don't really have an opinion on that, but God does. Preach, what do you think about divorce? Well, I don't really have an opinion on that, but God does. Hey, preach, what do you think about this or that? I don't really have an opinion on that, but God does. Yeah. That's whose opinion matters. Yeah. When we think on this text today, Lazarus, had a unique experience, but yet nowhere after that do I find where he was used really in any way back in John 11 to turn that experience into something. But who got the credit? God got the credit. Lazarus didn't become a slave. God became a slave. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. Last verse of the day, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And then I'm going to challenge you if I'm not already. No marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I know we have a few folks in here that really appreciate Adrian Rogers. And he told a story basically one time and said this. That he dealt with a young lady that said, Preacher, preacher, oh, you'll never guess what happened. I had a dream last night and standing at the front of my bed was this uh, spirit that talked to me and just told me how good heaven was going to be and all these kind of things. And she said, I felt so good since I had that little vision. And, and guess what? Uh, I just said, I just know things are right now. And I will look at that verse again. Satan himself can be transformed into what? An angel of light. See, church, we better make sure that we didn't have some unique emotional experience. Church, we better make sure we didn't have just some experience with a spirit. You better make sure you had an experience with the God of the Bible. Yeah. And make sure your experience is rooted in that, the God of the Bible, the Jesus of the Bible, the Holy Spirit of 
the body. That makes sense, amen. amen. See, because we do better make sure that we didn't just have some little good, feel good experience and all that. Sure, make sure your experience was there. Because here's the real fact of the matter. Write it down if you don't remember anything else. You can have a very real experience, but not with it. No. It can be real. That's the whole point. Don't blow that stuff off. Oh, yeah, we, we get together now and we play these Ouija boards and all that kind of stuff. I just find it. Hey, listen to me, church. It is real. And you need to be careful when you flirt with the devil. They used to say don't play with fire. So you're going to get burned. Right. So why would you play with the one that's eventually going to be cast in a lake of fire? Because I know you get Church, I love you enough to lay on your hearts the message God laid on mine. We need to be careful that our one source of direction is the Holy Spirit of all God. By the way, everything the Holy Spirit tells us will line up perfectly with His Holy Word. If it's the God of the Bible and the Holy Spirit of the Bible. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. Let's be sure to understand these people back in the Lord. Heads are out, eyes are closed. Nobody's looking around. Maybe you're here today and just been challenged because you've been tempted to allow yourself to fall into some traps. Perhaps it's Satan has seen. Maybe you're here today and you just realized that you know what? The experience I had was. Genuine, you want to thank God for it. The experience you had, you know now is with the God of the Bible. Maybe you're just here today and want to pray for your children or grandchildren and just say simply this, God, please, please help them to live fully dependent on the Holy Spirit of God and not any other spirit. We'd be naive if we thought everybody here was a teetotaler. Maybe you're here today and some nights your life's under the influence of a different spirit and you want to just come and pray and ask God to help you with that. Maybe it is a spirit of lust. Young people, don't turn your bodies into some light thing. Maybe it is a spirit of addiction. Maybe it is prescribed pills. Maybe it's illegal narcotics. Maybe it's a thought life that's unhealthy. Maybe it is a spirit of depression or oppression. What spirit is in conflict with the Holy Spirit in your life? Maybe you just want to come and say, Lord, I pray for guidance. Maybe you just want to come and pledge your love to him and thank him. No doubt in the crowd this size, there's also some that have dealt with those spirits before. But you've been set free by the God of the universe. And you want to just come and thank him. I stand ready to pray with you. Bring a prayer for if you want to. I'll let you pray by yourself whatever you need or want. Would you be obedient to God's voice today? Try the spirits, the old song says. But the only way to know you get the right one is compared to the Word of God. And if you have the right one, maybe you just turn this into a time of praise today. Father, I've talked enough, and I pray you've done the praise.